the purpose of Wealth Talk is to educate, inform, and hopefully entertain you on the subject of building your wealth. Wealth Builders recommends you should always take independent financial, tax, or legal advice before making any decisions around your finances. Welcome to episode 160 of Wealth Talk. My name is Christian Rodwell, the Membership Director for Wealth Builders, and I'm joined today by our founder, Mr. Kevin Whelan. Hello, Kevin. Hi, Chris. Good to be with you again, as always, and another fascinating insight to one of our members today. It's that time of the month again, yeah, where we shine the spotlight on one of our members. And uh, today, that member is Neil Monday. And Neil joined us only a year ago, uh, but he's achieved an incredible amount within that short space of time. And, and Neil, of course, lives up in Scotland. He's married to his wife, Marie. And, and Neil's a, you know, a high flyer. He's a high earner. He works hard in his day job, but he still finds the time to build wealth. And uh, what, what a great job he's done. Well, it's a whirlwind, isn't it, really? And you'll hear from him the catalyst because, you know, there's a there's sometimes a misunderstanding that goes on, you know, that people who have got high incomes are wealthy, you know, because they, they could sometimes carry themselves uh, sound well. You know, they've got nice cars, nice houses. Um, but it isn't recurring. So it's still ultimately trading time for money. And what I've found to be true, Chris, is some of the most successful people in terms of their ability to earn an income have the biggest drop in their standard of living when that income eventually dries up. For whatever reason, that could happen. Now, we know there's an economic crisis on the way. We know that sometimes that has an impact on people losing their jobs. Uh, health can uh, throw in something um, to, to impact on that. And, and we know from my story, you know, sometimes tragic early deaths do that, and that can devastate a family. So I think it was it was good of Neil to spot that uh, in a quiet moment of reflection that you pulled out of him, that hmm, maybe I'm doing well, but I'm not building residual recurring wealth building income. And that's a fundamental lesson that I think any high earners out there or any medium earners, you know, out there, uh, ambitious employees is who we're aiming for, isn't it, really? So people who want that ambition of being able to maintain that lifestyle or even a better lifestyle with a better work-life balance by building recurring income, not just trading time for money. That's right. And uh, the process we'll be walking through today is our nine-step recurring revenue roadmap. And that's what we teach our members inside the Wealth Builders Academy. So if you are interested in the process we're talking about today and you want to find out a bit more about how we help people, then do head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash academy and you can uh, read all about it there. So uh, I think Neil's got lots to say, so let's not uh, let's now hold back any longer. And let's head on to our conversation with Neil Monday. Neil, welcome to Wealth Talk today. How are you? Yeah, great. Thank you, Christian. Really appreciate the uh, the invite to participate. Well, we had to have you come and share your story, Neil, because it's been a whirlwind year since you joined the Wealth Builders Academy and you've uh, you've done so much and uh, really looking forward to walking through our nine-step roadmap, which, of course, is the process that we teach all of our members to move from a place of financial insecurity through to security and then onwards towards independence. So, uh, as usual, we're going to go through each of the nine steps and, of course, it's broken down into three stages. Stage one is all about building confidence. So let's start then at the beginning, Neil, with step one. And this is all about mindset. So starting with the why. So was there a particular catalyst or point which you can think back to where you said to yourself, you know, I really need to start focusing on building my wealth? Yeah, very much so, Christian. So um, it really came on the back of nine months of lockdown, um, like a lot of uh, a lot of members, um, and really gave me time to reflect on my uh, you know, future, future of the family, where we were going, both from a kind of work, business, and, and um, personal perspective. Um, at the time, it was between kind of Christmas and New Year, 20, 2019, 2020. Um, I really disliked my full time job at, the, at that particular point in time. Um, and I was really looking for an exit strategy from that. And despite the big earnings, I've been in the sales uh, industry within IT for 25 years. Um, I was really getting to a point that the high pressure of IT sales was really kind of driving me to uh, to want to do something different with my uh, life. There was also a, a realisation that um, over the years, my wife and I, Marie, had accumulated lots of property. 
um, but we'd uh, we'd done so a pretty you know in, in most cases abroad in our own names and. Um, what we kind of realized from talking uh, together over this was that we were just, we, we weren't generating any income from any of those properties and we were just making the inheritance tax problem bigger for our kids. Um, so these revelations really kind of drove us into, um, over that kind of Christmas New Year break, into some guided action to do something about um, generating uh, wealth and, and cash flow uh, from our assets that we had. Yeah, yeah. Well, lo- lots of factors there uh, contributing <clears throat> towards that. And what was it that drew you towards wealth builders in particular? Can you remember, Neil? Yeah, so I um, remember very clearly, actually. So um, I re- immediately turned to property as a, as a focus area and um, started to uh, listen to podcasts, YouTubes, um, look, watching a lot of kind of videos and reading reading a few books as well, audio books. And um, I'd initially came across Simon Zucci, um, who's uh, obviously a well-known property uh, expert in the UK. And I uh, was invited to one of his uh, virtual events uh, on Good Friday, 2021. Uh, and Kevin uh, was there uh, presenting on the virtues of SaaS pensions and what they could do to help uh, power the, uh, the property journey for, uh, you know, for many. So that's what originally kind of uh, triggered my interest. And then uh, I engaged formally with Wealth Builders soon after that, uh, with Kevin specifically to talk about some of my kind of pension uh, bits and pieces. Yeah, yeah. So the, the SAS there was a real sort of light bulb moment for you, was it? Very much so, yeah. So I'd, I'd obviously you know, I'd had some big plans in terms of what I was looking to do with my uh, property journey. And when I kind of heard about that, I thought, this is just going to give me another string to that ball. And uh if I do it correctly, it could, uh, it could, you know, accelerate me to where uh, I want to get too quickly. Yeah, well, we'll come on shortly to exactly how, you know, how that <clears throat> progressed. Um, so moving on to step two then. So step two is all about the foundation, really taking a good stock take of <clears throat> kind of what you've got coming in and out of your life. Um, and also looking at the five levels of wealth and understanding, you know, where are you in terms of financial insecurity and, and what's that next level? So can you remember what level you were at when you joined, Neil? Yeah, um, not surprisingly, I, w- I was definitely at financial financial secu- insecurity. Um, so we, we had zero income being generated from any of the assets that we owned, despite owning a number of assets um, and uh, and obviously being in a very kind of high earning job. Um, that was a bit of a realisation once I started to really kind of understand the concept behind wealth building. So the position back then was... Um, despite my kind of employment and my other half had a very successful business. Um, she'd been kind of running childcare businesses for the last 20 years um, and always been very profitable. But we were still at a point of financial insecurity uh, because we didn't um, we didn't have any genera- generating income. And we had some pretty lofty outgoings with kids at private school and, you know, expensive lifestyles, etc. So that's kind of where, where I was back then. Um, and I guess... You know, from there, you know, uh, within 12 months, we are still at that same level of financial insecurity. But because of the wealth building steps that we've taken over the last 12 months, um, we're very much on our way to security and beyond towards independence. Yeah, excellent. Well, when we uh, when we get to the results, perhaps we'll hear some of the things that you've done in the last 12 months to, mm-hmm. to obviously move you towards that security number, Neil. And um, the other element of the foundation, as we said, is kind of taking a stop tape, call that the debits process. Mm-hmm. You said you had a lot of outgoings in your life. Was there anything that you were able to to kind of <clears> reassess <throat> and cut back on there and reallocate that money somewhere? Um, well, kind of ironically, um, we, we, it didn't make a significant uh, dent in terms of kind of looking at some of the immediate things that we could, uh, we, we could shave off. Um, you know, we had a very clear strategy going into the first year that um, we had a dual full strategy, if you like, in that we wanted to reduce those outgoings as much as we possibly could. So we set ourselves a goal of reducing those outgo- personal outgoings by 25% in year one to 50% in year two whilst at the same time building a strategy for generating net new cash flow from, from assets. Um, so not a huge impact on debit specifically, but a couple of things we did do, or we have done over the last 12 months, is um, we decided to rent out one of our properties that we have overseas that we weren't doing before. Um, we couldn't use it anyway because of, uh, because of the, uh, the pandemic. We couldn't travel there. 
Um, and that obviously then allowed us to cover the costs of that property without, you know, having to, um, you know, pay for that after, you know, after generating income. Um, secondly, we, um, and this was a tip that we got from one of the Wealth Builders podcasts, actually, is um, in and around our cars. So as we started to generate um, cash flow from the property investments we were making from a wealth building perspective, we used that um, by shifting our strategy to electric vehicles and, and putting the, um, the cars into the business. Um, so there was obviously tax efficiency of doing that, um, whilst at the same time um, allowing us to take a large chunk out of our kind of monthly out personal outcomes yeah very smart so uh yeah i love the way neil you've just you know you've really embodied everything that we teach you know you've taken action at every single step and you've seen results um so you know really pleased about that so the final step in in stage one um is what we call the roof so as you're aware this is all about protection of you and your assets so really looking at making sure you've got wills power of attorneys all of these uh, protection um, methods in place so you know what did you discover as you went through that yeah, so we, we'd already um, covered our wills and lost and powers of attorney um, kind of several years ago. And the reason we did that was um, we'd historically uh, obviously had a number of properties that, that we owned in our own names. And we also had uh, my uh, wife's business. So we, we had looked at wills and lost and power of attorneys historically. But where there was definitely a gap was in the area of life assurance. And um, especially once we closed our first big property deal, which I'm sure we come on to, um, and we also um, invested in a, in a new family home last year as well. So that left us very exposed. You know, I did personally, I had, you know, death in service and critical illness cover, and we had some income protection policies that we'd taken out. Um, but what we did do, again, another tip from, uh, from the, um, the wealth talk was we looked at relevant life as a, as a way of covering us both. Um, you know, based upon our kind of new position of the assets that we were kind of building and some of the exposure that we could have been potentially leaving. And um, we uh, we took a relevant life cover policy out again through the business using the tax efficiency benefits of um, doing that through, um, you know, through the business. Uh, you know, so so that's what we did. Um, so I would, I'm happy to say we're now completely covered um in terms of uh, that security good yeah. good so I hope, hopefully that gives you good peace of mind and uh, a strong foundation there with all of those things in place allows us to move on to stage two of the roadmap so now it's all about building knowledge and, and this is where we start looking at the assets in step four so we know there's seven different assets we refer to those as pillars uh, which did you already have in place with some experience when you first joined neil and what other pillars have you been able to utilize since Yes. Yeah, so as, as already mentioned, you know, we've had some previous experience, uh, you know, buying property um, abroad. So we were confident enough to um, go down that path and, and um, kind of jump into that particular area. Um, we hadn't really had any experience of buy to let mortgages or anything like that. Um, but that was our kind of first, you know, obviously first uh, focus, you know, to grow our property portfolio here in the UK. And then from a pensions perspective, um, you know, I had historically kind of consolidated all of my employer pensions over the years from several companies that I've worked for into a single into a single scheme. And result, we'd also spent some time um, moving Marie's final salary defined benefits pension into a money purchase scheme as well. So we kind of done a lot of the hard work in terms of the prep. Um, but since joining Wealth, Wealth Builders, what we've really done is double down on the property pillar, and we've also um, had our SAS approved, um, which has allowed us to further uh, invest in, in property from uh, leveraging that particular asset as a, as a vehicle for doing so. Yeah, no, excellent. And I know you had a conversation with Kevin um, around that transfer of, of pensions. And um, as part of the S of the debits process, it's kind of assessing stock market fees and, and other associated fees. Um, I think there was there was a, a story around that, Neil, was there? There was, absolutely. And uh, so what we did, you know, once I started to talk to Kevin, which was the initial kind of introduction to Wealth, wealth Builders, <clears throat> um, he kind of guided me and showed me the way um, in terms of being able to um, 
you know, attack that S and debits, if you like, in terms of those support costs that we were paying to the pension uh, provider at the time. Um, so we were successful at the end of that journey, which took several months of um, an ongoing complaint with said company to um, effectively make a significant saving at the end of that um, in terms of early withdrawal charges, which allowed us to move that additional chunk into the SAS pension fund once it, uh, you know, once it was approved um, about a month after, as it, as it happened. Yeah. We even got some compensation from the provider, um, you know, for our, um, you know, the headache that we'd uh, effectively gone through as a result of that. Well, good, good work there. So moving into step five, which is leverage. Uh, leverage is key to wealth building, and it isn't necessarily <clears throat> always financial leverage, but it could be intellectual or relationship systems, uh, and time. So can you provide us with any examples, Neil, of how you've brought leverage into play to help you build your wealth? Yeah, there's been many examples, actually, um, albeit in a very short space of time. So the obvious one um, when we did our first project last year was uh, commercial finance. So, um, you know, we were fortunate enough, as I mentioned earlier, because of our kind of history and, and, and employment, to have a large enough deposit to invest in our first um, property project. Um, so using the combination of, a, of a, our cash and some other cash that we'd liquidated from sales of some property that we had abroad, we were able to find that and, and fund um, the deposit through director's loan, director's loans into the, uh, into the company. Um, we also borrowed the balance uh, on a commercial buy-to-let basis, um, which uh, was, was really the, you know, the catalyst for get us, get, getting us going last year. Um, Another area was the SAS pension. We've talked about uh, SAS, you know, once we basically had that approved towards the end of the year, um, uh, we took a loan back uh, from the SAS pension to, uh, you know, to fund another property. Um, so, again, using the pension um, to, uh, to be able to do that. And, and the associated piece to this is um, we also did a third-party loan uh, from the SAS as well. Um, but the interesting part of that is not just to get a return on the investment. You are also looking to get a, an intellectual return as well by getting some learnings. So we uh, we've invested in a project that will give us learnings around um, how to develop and build and operate an apart hotel, which is something that um, I'm sure we'll come on to as a yeah. as a next step on the uh, roadmap for us. Indeed. And I just want to pull out the, the relationship leverage there, Neil, because, you know, you've been a great contributor to the, the, the Facebook group, you know, the private community. Uh, I see photos of you having lunches with other members. You know, tell us a little bit about some of the relationships that you've built over the last 12 months. Yeah, so um, they've been varied. So Wealth Builders has been a great platform for um, getting into other, connected with other communities as well, like the SAS Alliance. So I've been heavily involved in the SAS Alliance over the last 12 months, uh, and also some, as a result, some of the kind of local, um, uh, you know, local events here in Scotland that are very much focused on the SAS community up here in uh, in Scotland. But yeah, there's been some fantastic support. You know, obviously we've got um, we've got our own administrators and trustees, you know, with regards to the different funds that we have. Uh, but just being able to connect with other, you know, trustees and administrators through that process um, has been really, really great. The other thing I've really enjoyed about the connections is that, you know, everybody's in that kind of same boat. Everybody's trying to do similar things. Um, there's always going to be somebody a little bit further ahead than somebody else. But the the learnings and knowledge um, that, that we've had as a result of those um, those connections, you know, G GP is a great example. You know, he's always kind of spurring me along and, you know, telling me to, you know, keep going and giving me that uh, support that, uh, you know, that, that I've needed really. Um, as I've got going over the over the last yeah. couple of months, so fantastic. Um, that's fantastic. really good. Great, great to hear. Yeah, you def definitely can't do this by yourself. You, you've got to have got to have good people around you. Yeah. Cool. Moving into step six then. So this is all about strategy, Neil. So you've already alluded to some of the you know, <coughs> strategies by using your pension, but uh, within property, what's really been the main focus, and especially in terms of like helping you move that needle towards your security figure. Yeah, so um, back in mid-21, um, we decided to um, to purchase an apartment block, um, which is a classic, classic Neil, actually. 
you know, initially um, the, the conversation on our life was that we were going to buy one or two small apartments to get us going on the journey. So, um, but no, I didn't want to do that. I wanted to go a little bit bigger. So, so we ended up buying an old, um, uh, what was an old converted hotel, uh, dates back to 1822, it was an old coaching inn. Um, and it was developed into luxury apartments. So um, I'd done a lot of research um, in the area that we live, and it was very obvious that there was a very high rental demand uh, here in the area, uh, and also a significant lack of um, short-term rental accommodation. So what we did is we, um, we decided to uh, purchase the properties in a single title, okay? And... Um, we, uh, we've carved the apartment up into say 50% long-term rentals to give us that sustainable, steady, uh, you know, return, uh, on, on a month to month, year to year basis. And the other 50%, we have taken uh, a chance on the service accommodation, uh, business, uh, to drive higher yields and fingers crossed, uh, nine months on since we, uh, we com- completed on the property, we, seem to be definitely on the up and go, going well at this stage. Excellent. And I, I think there's another property in the pipeline as well, is there? Yeah, so I kind of strategy is changing slightly as a result of um, being able to leverage the uh, the capability of the SAS and the pension. So the next 12-month project is we're going to shift to a 100% commercial property strategy, um, but le- leveraging what we've already learned through our service accommodation um business and the whole systemization and, and uh, you know, optimizing the processes around that. So we're now looking to um, purchase and develop an old school um, and get a change of use to a hotel, an apart hotel uh, in a major city center here in Scotland. So, you know, big university town, you know, lots of historic, um, you know, kind of elements to, uh, to the area. So big, big tourism pool. And the idea is to convert that into a serviced accommodation, self-service, the part hotel model, um, 15 to 20, uh, 20 rooms. Um, and we're looking to leverage the pension to purchase the property as well as do the development and the refurbishment re- refurbishment required. And at the end of the, um, the development phase, when we move into that kind of operational state, we're looking to lease the uh, the building back from the SAS to our limited company. So that will allow us to continue to fuel the pension, uh, you know, over the next 10 years until we're ready to start uh, taking some of that as benefit. And um, whatever's left, it will be good cash flow that we get out to the thermometer. So Yeah, fantastic. And I'll just add, you're still working full time at the moment, are you, Neil? I certainly am, yeah. Um, I'm happy to say I'm in a much happier place than I was uh, in my previous role. So, um, yeah, still working full-time and uh, managing this uh, along with a colleague on, uh, supporting me, you know, from a development perspective. Yeah, so a good example, just, you know, no excuses if you, uh, you know, if you have a clear plan and you can find the time, <laughs> right? Um so, okay, well, this moves us into step seven, which is all about focus, Neil. So, uh, you know, you're clearly focused. Um, so what lessons can we learn from you? So once someone has chosen a strategy, the key is to follow the wheel of wealth, which we teach. And that means some education, good support, good connections, doing your due diligence, and then taking guided action. We've heard you give great examples of all of those already. And, of course, our wealth coaches are there each month to help you stay laser-focused on turning that wheel. So what benefits have you gained, Neil, from following this process and having that accountability each month? <clears throat> yeah, I mean, you know, focus, is, as, as, as you've kind of alluded to, it's never really been a big prob- problem for me because I'm a very focused individual. I, I'm, I'm pretty rigorous when it comes to, to planning, but... The Wheel of Wealth has been a fantastic um, process to follow. Um, And, you know, there's a lot of uh, discussion around don't don't try and kind of, you know, leapfrog one one part of the process and move to the next. But what it has done is it's kept me very focused as I've gone through the kind of education support um, element. And in a lot of cases, I've actually uh, partially turned the wheel this last year and then just decided that that particular strategy is not for me. So I've very quickly qualified out before moving as far as the due diligence phase and, and, and onto guided action. 
Um, but I think it's a fantastic process and with a combination of the, the network and the community from Wealth Builders and, and the SAS Alliance in particular, um, it's been kind of instrumental to helping me, you know, kind of drive progress and, and do the complete wheel turn a couple of times over the last year. And, and throughout, throughout the, um, the years I've mentioned, I've, I've obviously aborted partway through and, and, and yeah. moved very swiftly, you know, fail fast is, is, yeah. a, is a motto I live by and move to the next. Specific to the coaches, um, so I, I was fortunate enough to kind of have two coaches this year. So um, obviously I've, I've, I've got my kind of ongoing kind of wealth building coach with Carol, who's been Carol Robinson, who's been fantastic in terms of keeping me on the straight and narrow um, being a, a fantastic support in terms of giving me the reassurance that I'm actually doing the right things um, and uh, just kind of, you know, guiding me and, and, and prodding me now and again to say, why don't we try this and try that, um, you know, just to further enhance, uh, you know, free more time up for yourself. So that's been, that's been great. And I, I can't not mention Brian Harvey. Brian Harvey uh, on the SAS side, um, I was part of the SAS program as well, so he... Kick, kick the whole process off, help me get the uh, the approval going. And then um, up until very recently, he's, he's still been there, kind of giving me the fruits of his knowledge and the, and, and the guidance that's been equally as valuable as the time I've spent with Carol this last 12 months. So Excellent. both fantastic coaches. Yeah, big shout out to both Brian and Carol. I know they'll be listening. So, um, yeah, thank you for that. All right, step eight. So this is all about results. So we've turned some wheels now, as you said. Sometimes they, they go full cycle, sometimes they don't. But a full turn of the wheel should generate either income, um, you know, cash flow or, or capital. So you mentioned you're at Insecurity when you joined, Neil. Um, you know, how much have you managed to add to your thermometer since joining? Yeah, so I've been pretty relentless measuring the uh, the month-to-month progress um, and using all of the tools and templates and, and uh, support that we've, we, we've had from the community. But my current net cash flow, um, as, as to where we are today, um, we've managed to get to 3500 a month. Now, bearing in mind I've got a pretty high bar <laughs> that I'm, um, I'm, I'm needing to get to to get to security. But I would say that this is net of the... Um, relevant life cover contributions going out and the cost of the the nice cars that we've got um as part of that so it would be higher you know if i, if I wasn't um you know if i wasn't leveraging the uh the cash flow to uh, to fund those things but yeah three and a half thousand as well oh, that's, that's a brilliant achievement in in the first 12 months neil and obviously with the the project that is coming up the school um what do you see that being able to add hopefully yeah, so that will take me well through my security threshold, which is around about ten thousand, yeah. <laughs> and uh, into uh, in, into independence. So within two years of starting, I should hopefully be at my independence figure. Wow, wow, really great. So step nine is accelerate. I don't know if you've got any more gas in the tank now, but <laughs> by repeating the process of choosing your pillar, your strategy, and then, you know, obviously your use of leverage, you will to move towards a place of financial independence. You're definitely on track for that. Uh, for most people, that journey, uh, we say, yeah. take on average five years. And um, what do you see as being the key to helping you continue to stay focused and, and reach those goals, Neil? I think a lot of it is is down to the results that that I've, I've seen be achieved, and um, you know the, the great network of people that I've managed to meet. So, you know, the continued focus, uh, the ongoing education, and connecting with those that I've already met, and I'm sure there'll be more, um, you know, that I come across, uh, more great people that I come across over time. But you know, to me, every day is a learning day. That's a motto I've always kind of stood by and, and, and continue to stand by. I love knowing new, you know, learning new things and figuring new things out. Um, so I think this is really the key. Uh, it, it's really about staying focused and just continuing what I've what I've started. Um, on, and, and hopefully that will get us to the multi-year plan that we've got to, uh, you know, it, it, at, at an appropriate time in the future, be in a position to make a decision whether full-time employment is still what I want to continue doing. So that's what's driving me the most at the moment. Kids are still a private school. Um, you know, that, that's, that's, not a, <laughs> that's not a cheap thing. Consistency is key. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're a great example of what's possible, Neil. You've been a, a fantastic member of the Wealth Builds community. So thank you. Well done. Look forward to hearing further updates in the future. No, great. Look forward to it, Christian. And again, thanks for having me on. It's been great. Thanks.
Okay, always inspiring listening to Neil there and um, just so exciting to think like where he'll be in, in another 12 months time. But um, lots of lessons we can go through there, Kevin. Um, before we do that, let's read out some reviews and uh, mixing it up again this week and heading to iTunes um, for some specific podcast reviews. And I've got one from Larry who says, such an informative, supportive podcast, well worth a follow. And that's followed on by... Proxy Moose, who says, keep it up, guys. Loving the podcast, as informative and professional as ever. Thank you for taking up your valuable time to bring us this every week. Marvellous all round. Well, it's good that there's an acknowledgement that we are taking time because you know, we're committed to this, Chris, aren't we? This is, what, what 160 now? Uh, and we're going to continue to do that, to share lessons and learnings and insights and distinctions fundamentally from not just us. It's not just a... Um, you know, one-way traffic from us to communicate, but we want to have people, you know, communicate back to us and tell us what they're liking, what they're not liking, what they want more of, what they want less of. And so thank you for taking a moment or two of your time, those two uh, nice people, to say something that we can uh, we can learn from as well. Yeah, and um, wherever you're listening to the podcast, uh, you may or may not be able to leave a review, but if you'd like to just share some words, then the easiest place is head to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash reviews, and uh, and you can pop one on Google or Trustpilot, and we'll read it out in the coming weeks. Yes, and Neil has been very generous with his reviews for us because you know we've been instrumental in helping him in, in many ways, but bear in mind, of course, it's Neil who's doing the work what we're doing is help, helping to focus all of that energy that he's got. And, and just before diving into lessons, I just want to pay a, a personal note of tribute to to Neil. Um, you know, I was recently talking about playing golf and I posted something on that. And he said, well, you know, why don't you guys come to Glen Eagles? I'm 10 minutes away, you know, which is a world famous golf course. So he's always looking to help people and to be generous of spirit and nature. And I think he embodies the real wealth builder community. Uh, so hats off to Neil and uh, keep going, Neil. You're going to be a shining light. And hey, maybe one day you might be a wealth coach. <laughs> that would be cool, wouldn't it? So um, so Neil referred back to the first time he, he came across wealth builders, really, Kevin. And, and actually, he came across you because... If you remember back to that Easter Friday, 2021, when you were doing a, a webinar for Simon Zucci, I, I remember that very well. Okay. And um, and that's where Neil, you know, jumped on, heard you talk about the world of SaaS pensions and uh, just kind of opened his eyes and thought, wow, uh, there's something that I'm kind of missing a trick here. Uh, piqued his interest. And then that was quickly followed up with a phone call with yourself. And uh, I think that phone call was quite an interesting one. Well, you know, the whole concept of SaaS, Chris, is a fascinating one. And anybody who takes time to think about it can understand that pensions are the bedrock of retirement planning, therefore wealth planning in the UK. And most pensions are extraordinarily bad value for money. Uh, we like recurring income, don't we? That's the essence of wealth building. Sadly, for most people, the only recurring income story that's going on there is the institutions taking a percentage of somebody else's money. And I think that's time for a big shake-up. Um, and thanks to Neil for, you know, taking that curiosity one step further to find out. And that's what I think, you know, lots of people don't do, Chris. They hear something that could be good for them, uh, whatever that would be, and they just prejudge it. They go, well, oh, no, you know, maybe I haven't got the time for this or maybe it all sounds too complicated. Instead of just taking the very first step, and we often find that, Chris, don't we, when we open our doors for new members, uh, we'll say, look, you know, you can't buy what we're offering you. We want you to come on a call so we can help you. And then during that call, you're establishing uh, the context of whether we'd be a good fit for you and you'd be a good fit for us. But still, so few people, as a, an overall percentage of people who listen to us, take that very first step towards trying to be financially independent, uh, like Neil has done. And I'm so impressed with Neil's commitment. And uh, we only ask people to spend a day, a month, don't we? Eight hours in a month. If you can't spend that length of time, it's going to be really difficult, if not impossible, to build your wealth. And he finds that. And I think COVID was one of those helping hands there, wasn't it, really, because of the 
hybrid lifestyle that many people are now working, they can carve out a little bit more time than they had before when they were jet setting or flying and doing all sorts of things where it's so much more difficult to spend some quality time in education, in support, or in uh, building and working with the well builder community. So again, you know, I think the timing was right for Neil. Maybe reflect on that if you're listening. You know, what's stopping you from just taking a step forward to help build your wealth, whether with wealth builders or or anybody else? Mm. And because Neil's, you know, good at managing his time, he actually was able to to join both of our programs, wasn't he? We actually run two core programs really at Wealth Builders. One is the Academy, which yeah. is holistic, and the other is the SAS program, which is obviously much more focused on on the pension pillar. And um, you know, sometimes that's right for people to do that, Kevin. And sometimes, you know, we we say, well, look, probably best start with one so you don't have overwhelm, have too much going on. Yeah, that's a good point, Chris, that you make. I think the two core programs, which you know are the same price as well, so sometimes people can get confused. The jigsaw puzzle, the puzzle of how to build wealth, the whole kind of outline is in the academy program. And I think it's always wise to start there because then you're building on solid principles. But if you've got a burning desire and you've got some time and you've got enough money to to consider it and the limited company, because, of course, you need to be you need to have a limited company to be able to be eligible for SAS, and it's a puzzle piece. You know, it's one piece of the overall jigsaw puzzle, but it's a very powerful one because it's uh, it's a it's a way to turn pension money and uh, and turn it into any of the other pillars. So you can turn it into property, business, intellectual property, or joint ventures. And so few pensions can do that. You know, most pensions are stuck on a stock market roller coaster with no recurring income at all. Save for the point that I mentioned before, the recurring income that flows into the institutions for the privilege of managing money, which is not difficult to do. And we teach that uh, as an investment pillar, don't we? That you can learn to manage your money and be empowered to delegate. That's fine. But delegation very quickly, as we know, can turn into abdication. And that's the worst of all worlds, really. Mm. So coming back to the roadmap then, and, and the first thing is obviously Stage one, building confidence, getting the foundations in place, putting the roof on. And Neil talked about a few things there. You know, they had properties already, mostly abroad, and they Mm -hmm. were holiday homes. So they, you know, were just empty. And uh, during COVID, obviously, we weren't able to travel, weren't able to use those. Um, So started to rent them out. So actually, they're starting to cover their costs. And uh, that was just one of the things that uh, Neil did as part of the debits process. And then when reviewing the roof, obviously, the protection of his assets, they, um, they were exposed to relevant life. And able to then put that through the business, which was more tax efficient. And again, you know, finding some savings there. Um, so, so those were all very good things that were done in the early stages. And in fact, we did a podcast on relevant life insurance back on episode 66, uh, which was titled Six Tax Saving Tips. So I'll link to that one in the show notes. Mm-hmm. So anyone listening can find out more. You know, let me add a, a touch to that because the, the whole debits process of reviewing debt, education, bills, insurance, tax, and stock market fees. It sounds like it runs off the tongue, but in reality, it's it's quite deep and meaningful, and it always unveils something. And most people will discover quite a bit of money, and in Neil's case, quite a lot in the pension pillar as well, um, you know, because of some challenges that we'd spotted, and then we overcame those challenges, which led to a saving, you know, almost to 50,000 pounds. So, you know, big, big things can be done there, but most people don't start. They go, oh, I won't find anything, you know. But we've got countless examples of people who save money in the debits process, Chris. So the tax side of things, really, really important. And also recognizing that when you're building wealth, we want you to consider yourself as an entrepreneur and entrepreneurs solve problems. and, And it's easier to build wealth if you've got a business. Because often you've got a cost in your life that you're paying for out of post-tax income. You know, you paid your tax, you paid your national insurance, and so is your employer. But you can switch that and and redirect that often to your company. So you, you direct it, redirect it to your limited company. And Relevant Life is just one of those examples where instead of paying for life cover separately, you get your company to do it. And that basically reduces your tax bill by 50%, give or take, and also means you can either have more cover for your family 
or just cost you less. So if you save a lot more money, then you can plant the seed of the saving and build more wealth with it. So the whole thing is a very virtuous circle. But, uh, you know, you've got to start being open-minded to doing it. And as we keep saying, and Neil has done a great job of just continuing to follow the lessons and is not trying to sort of hold himself back. Yeah, and the other smart thing that Neil mentioned there is purchasing the electric cars, which, again, could be run through the business. So, again, more tax-saving right. benefits. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so once the foundation's in place and your roof is secured, then, of course, we move into stage two of our roadmap, and this is all about building knowledge. So this is where we decide, you know, which are the right pillars to be focusing on, where's your leverage coming from, and then what strategy will you be following? And Neil already had some experience of property, but not really in the UK. He wasn't so familiar with buy-to-lets, and Neil being Neil just kind of wanted to go all in. So he actually ended up purchasing uh, an old hotel, and uh, learn how to convert that into luxury apartments and then actually turn that into a serviced accommodation strategy. And again, all of this was just built up through asking questions and networking and community and, of course, working with his coach. So you know, all of the information is out there, Kevin, isn't it? Yes, and I think where you're trying to make distinctions to build wealth, a lot of people will hold themselves back again, Chris, and, and Neil's being almost like an arrowhead, you know, you can see he's, there's a wind that blows on us all and we know there's a big wind coming, um, but he's seeing and he's cutting through that by focusing rather than being buffeted by the wind to say, well, you know, property prices are too high or the stock market is too volatile and, and you just pushed and pulled in so many different directions, almost that wind buffeting you from both sides. But by by zeroing on something he could do and um, found himself a niche and that, he liked the holiday side, of course he did, from his own experience, but now has turned that into a, a real genuine business and having a, a hotel that you can turn into very nice apartments and make a very solid and substantial revenue because it's in a town that he knows and is relatively close to home, So, uh, which is you know populated well by, by visitors. Mm. And again, uh, an example of the power of combining multiple pillars together because – now moving into a commercial property strategy, he's able to leverage his pension to right. that. But but even uh, even cleverer uh, is something that you know you've been advocating uh, for a long time. Kevin is getting this free education and a double ROI on your money, and when you can use your pension to lend uh, for a third party loan then you can also not only get a return on your investment, but you get a return on interaction as well because you can learn as part of that process. Yeah, we call that a return on intellect, Chris, but when I get your point, the return on interaction is more about building relationships. But of course, that's a combination effect as well. So you're getting multiple ROIs all at the same time. And, and Neil's done a good job and, and we've done our best to connect him to people in our community. And that's an important point to reflect on as well, Chris, that you know we build, Wealth Builders is the only completely holistic and impartial wealth building company in the UK. We we don't push one agenda at all. <clears throat> and as a result, we're almost like um, a curator of excellence. So wherever we see excellence out there, the best in the UK at a certain wealth building pillar and strategy and the niche, niche, niche of some of those strategies, then we can connect our members to that. More often than not, with some kind of a discount or benefit or a bonus to allow them to get a significant advantage than if they'd approach them directly. And the other point being, of course, if if somebody's a Wealth Builder member and they're introduced personally by me or by you, then they're getting access almost behind the curtain. It's almost like a VIP access to things, and uh, we're proud to be able to do that. Our black book of um, what, what sometimes people call a little black book is now a very big black book, and we're always looking for great people. So again, if you know somebody who's outstanding at what they do and you're building your own wealth with their help, let us know. And maybe we can add them to our black book of contacts and uh, you'll be doing them a service. So give the gift of generosity by telling us if you've got anybody who's consistently nine out of 10 in your life. And that's what we look for, Chris, isn't it? It's a question I ask everybody. Who's nine out of 10 in your life? And we've connected Neil to people who are nine out of 10. And of course, Neil is very much nine out of 10 himself. So perfect combination. Yeah. 
And, um, you know, Neil's just been following the process. So obviously, once he got clear on his plan, then we teach the Wheel of Wealth. That's the process of uh, education, support, connection, due diligence, guided action. And that's really where you work closely with your coach, your wealth coach on a monthly basis. And uh, Neil very kindly, you know, gave um, gave a nod to, to Carol Robinson, his wealth coach, but also Brian Harvey, who has been his SaaS expert along the way and, and really, really helped. And, and sometimes those wheels don't go full turn and, and Neil said that himself and you've got to fail fast and sometimes just let go when something's not working and move on to the next wheel turn and and Neil has now successfully turned the wheel to be generating three and a half thousand pounds per month recurring income within 12 months and he said within the next 12 months he will achieve his financial security figure which for Neil because of the high outgoings children at private schools and the lifestyle that he enjoys you know it's a little bit higher for Neil so yeah. To, to achieve that within two years is still an absolutely amazing result. Yeah, look, m- most people can can achieve financial independence in you know five years on average, maybe seven years if you you know got some things that are pulling against you in terms of time or your initial starting capital, anything like that. Uh, but you know, if you can do that in five years, and in Neil's case, probably more quickly, but five years of putting a few hours in a month to be financially independent for the rest of your life rather than work 40 odd years and be financially insecure for the, for the rest of your life and never be able to leave a great legacy. I don't know. It just seems to me, why would 95% just keep, you know, turning that um, old fashioned wheel, the, the hamster wheel, the whatever wheel that, you know, people turn the tyranny of the routine of daily life, as I call it. Why would, why would they do that when, all you're looking for, for the, mo- for the most part, Chris, is a catalyst to get you out. You know, something that just nudges you and says, enough's enough. For Neil, he found it himself. I found it myself through a tragic early death of my father. But you don't need tragedy to do it. It can sometimes be an inspiration. And I hope that if you've been a listener to this podcast for a while and you're, and you're on 160 and you've been listening to a few episodes, what's holding you back? What could you be doing to do to make the first connection? You know, book a call with Chris and just talk to him and he can help you understand, is there a way that you can accelerate your path to wealth? Or whatever it is, do something. Don't sit and just watch and be buffeted by the wind that's coming. And that wind that's coming is going to be stormier than ever before and for longer than ever before as stagflation starts to settle in to the UK and the US. And it's not going to be a fun ride, Chris. So you need some help to keep you safe. Definitely. You know, take that first step. If you're just curious, just to have a chat, just to see if there's some way that we could help you along the way, then book a call and uh, go to wealthbuilders.co.uk forward slash discovery call. Just book a short call and we can uh, we can chat together there. So, um, mm-hmm. okay. Well, well done again to Neil. Thanks for sharing. And um, again, if you've enjoyed the episode and you think someone else might like to hear Neil's story, why not share this with a friend? Just uh Head to your podcasting app and uh, and hit the share button. And uh, Kevin, we will undoubtedly be back again, same time, same place next week. We will indeed. And until then, my friend, see you. We hope you enjoyed today's episode. Don't forget that we are constantly updating our resources inside the Wealth Builders membership site to help you create, build and protect your wealth. Head over to wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership right now for free access. That's wealthbuilders.co.uk slash membership.